Hi, this is Kathy from Craft with Kathy. Thanks for joining me this evening. We're going to be doing a quick little holiday craft, and I'm not quite sure actually what I want my end result to be yet with this. I just know what I want to do and how I'm going to use it is kind of up in the air. So I'm open for any ideas and suggestions that you might actually have. Just jump on in and let me know what you're thinking. I'm coming at you from the suburbs west of Chicago. Drop me a line. Let me know where you're viewing from. These are some really cool little wood slices that I found online. And one of the things I really liked about them is, well, here they are in, in its natural state, okay? Unfinished, not varnished, not painted or anything. But they came with these little um, eye hooks and were pre-drilled. So all I did was screw the little eye hooks into the pre-drilled hole. And then I took some of our white chalk paste and actually diluted it with a little bit of water and painted the rounds so that um, they're white as opposed to the natural wood. And then I actually used some of our surface wax on it and I wanted to make sure because, well, I actually sanded these a little bit first before I painted them, but they were very, very smooth. Um, the only thing I would suggest if you're doing something with these is to watch the crumbles from the actual bark. You don't wanna get that underneath your transfer. You don't want the little pieces of bark um, getting stuck to the back of your silk screen or anything. Hi, Bonnie, how are you? Oh goodness, Midwest Wisconsin, how cold is it there? My brother's up further north and I noticed it was only like 14 and I was like, seriously? And I'm complaining and we're not, we're like around th in the 30s, so I really shouldn't whine, right? So I'm going to use this little transfer from Falala. -la. Fa -la, la had four different 18 degrees. Oh, that's not much better than 14. I am just not ready for winter. I know that sounds terrible. I know it's December. I know that Christmas is around the corner, but I am just not ready for it. Brr. Okay. So I whitewashed these um, with some uh, chalk paste that I just diluted with a little bit of water. And then I, when that was dry, I added a little bit of surface, surface wax, um, rubbed it in, rubbed it off. And that's all the prep I've really done with this. And what I want to use is this transfer from Falala. Falala comes with four different transfers in it. Um, I think you probably saw me do Mary Everything on the galvanized um, tin. And then there's Noel that I did on one of our rectangular simple shapes. And joy to you and me, I think I did on an Odette board. So I've used them all on different surfaces. Really kind of versatile transfer. I absolutely love it. But for tonight, I'm going to use the Fa La La. And I'm thinking of putting one stocking on each little wood round. Um, what I'm going to do with them eventually, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'm going to use them to make a banner or um, and mix them up with other things or if I'm just gonna do a little tiny mini banner with the four or what we'll kind of see I'm kind of open to ideas and suggestions with that so with that said I'm going to fuzz this transfer and get started on this project and I'm using different colors for each stocking and then I've got a bunch of little bows over here that I've pre-made just to get the top of the wood rounds. So I'm gonna fuzz this transfer, deliberately add a little bit of um, lint to it so it doesn't stick quite as snugly. And I'm just putting this on my fuzzing cloth to do that. And then I'm gonna use them one by one on each round. And I'm hopefully gonna be careful enough that I don't get them stuck to my surface or something else as I go along. Thinking about that, I'm going to put this backer, whoops, almost knocked over the laptop there. I'm going to put the backer back on 
so that I don't get this stuck to itself as I work. Okay, so this way I've got one stocking. Oh, was that crooked or what? One stocking to work at, work on at a time. Let me fix this a little bit. Here we go. So being that I have this little eye hook at the top, I want to make sure that's at the top of my round when I apply my transfer so that I have it centered within it. And I'm actually going to take this up and take a little peek, a little crooked there. Let me try that again. Ooh, it's kind of pulling off over here. Let's see what's going on. It's not sticking really good to the round, which is kind of strange. Oh, I know why, because my backer's there. I need to peel it back a little bit and expose a little bit more of the transfer of the adhesive of the transfer. Okay, that should work a little bit better there. There we go. Okay. And I want to make sure I don't have any air bubble underneath my silk screen. I don't have to press this down hard. I just don't want an air bubble because then my chalk paste doesn't go through the silk screen evenly. And I'm going to use the Shimmer Crimson on this. And I have these cute little gingham bows to go with this. Oops, I accidentally, looks like I'm opening up a new jar here. I didn't realize that. Oh, well, that's fine. Let me just open this up. I have an already open jar in the other room, but it's kind of near the end. And of course, I just popped up the top and I have a lot of paste on the foil tab. So I'm going to put that paste back in there. Scrape it off and get it back into the jar. There we go. Now I just have to clean up my fingers. Hold on just a second. I'm wearing more of the paste than I'm probably going to use on the project. I love the shimmers. They give an extra little dimension um, to projects. And I'm going to be using, I think, three different shimmers on here. And I think I'm going to use just the plain ocean mist for a blue. Okay, so I just cleaned off my right hand and stuck my left finger, left hand in, my, in the jar. Okay, so I'm going to grab a little bit of paste here. Just apply it over the silk screen. Pull it through. Cover it all up. Smooth it out. Remove any excess, put it back in the jar. Then I'm just going to lift this up and let's take a look. I heard something snap as I was applying the paste, so I'm hoping I don't have any bleeding. Now that looks pretty good. Quick and easy. And I'm going to use a little Shimmer Olive for the next one. If some of these are larger than others, I want to just be careful of making sure I get a appropriate sized wood slice here. And I'm going to stir up my olive paste. It looks like it might have gotten a little dry. Let me just kind of check it out. Let me add a little bit of distilled water to it. Our paste should always be the consistency um, between a yogurt and a sour cream. And you want to use distilled water because you don't want any 
issue with any of the minerals in tap water interacting with the pigments of the paste. Also, oh, that's much, much better there. I think I could probably just add a little bit more there. Maybe like a spritz and a half there. If you ever add too much water, all you have to do is leave the cover off a little bit until it um, thickens up and dries up again. So no harm, no foul with that. Okay, I want to center this. I'm looking at my... Oh, this is going to barely, barely fit. Let's see. Got to be at my top. I wonder if I have a bigger round that would work a little bit better for this one. this one. The stocking's a little bit longer than the other ones, so I just want to make sure that it fits on here, that I can get it all on. And that actually seems smaller. Let me go back to this one. I'll just put it a little bit on an angle here. And we just want to get that boot or the toe of it. There we go. And I'm missing a little bit at the top, but I think that'll be fine. I don't think it'll be noticeable. And I'm gonna use the Olive Shimmer here. Grab a clean squeegee. And just apply this over the silk screen. Waxing your wood does has two benefits. One is it helps you not to pick up anything from the surface, either the paint or a splinter or anything. And the other is if you make a mistake, it gives you a little bit of leeway or time to erase it or clean things up because the pigment of the paste isn't absorbed quite so quickly. Our shimmer paste takes a little bit longer to dry than our regular paste. So I'm just setting it aside to dry as I go on to the next one. a little bit smaller so let me grab a smaller round again check where my little hanger is make sure I get that in the center there we go on to the third you can see this project is really moving around along very quickly isn't it simple this would be so cute, I think, as a banner across a, um, a fireplace mantle. Just an idea. I no longer have a fireplace. Um, but I think it would have looked really nice at my previous home. I'm using a very light blue. This is called Ocean Mist. It's like a gray blue and very, very pretty. It is not a shimmer, however, but I love it anyway. Hi, Tammy. How are you doing? Lift that off. And we'll get on to the fourth and last stocking here. Like I said, I'm not quite sure what I want for the end result with this. I don't know if I want to make it a banner or what I want to put in between them, but with a banner, I could actually hang these. I have, um, oh, I have some jute around here. Here it is that I brought out thinking I do that, but I might wait on it and decide what I want to do. 
I might string them with the jute and actually put different ribbons in between or maybe other little objects. I haven't decided. I just thought these were so cute and I was anxious to get started with some type of project, make something with them, right? When I saw the um, that they came with the little eye screws and they were pre-drilled, I was like, well, that's right up my alley. I don't have to futz with it at all. And let's see if I can get this one to fully fit here. I might lose a little bit on the top. Okay. And make sure I've got that centered. That looks good. And I'm going to use the shimmer purple on this one. I think it's shimmer purple, yeah. Shimmer plum. And I'm missing a little bit at the top, but that's okay. Grab a clean squeegee. And I'm putting my finger on the transfer, not to hold the transfer in place, but to hold the wood slice in place so it doesn't scoot or move as I pull the paste through the soak screen. Usually with a frame or something like that, it has a little bit more heft or a little bit weight to it. I just don't want to go applying this and have my wood round scoot around on me here. There you go. I think I'm going to clean the transfer as these dry. And I'm going to clean it at my surface. It's really easier to run it over to a sink and run it under water. Um, but I don't have a camera over there. And I don't have a lot of surface space here when I'm working. To use, um, I have a little bucket, a little square bucket with a drain in the bottom that works really good for cleaning my transfers. And if I was at my desk, like I used to be, that would be much easier to use. But without either option, I'm just gonna clean this by spritzing it with a little water. It's not that large of a transfer. I'm gonna spritz the adhesive side first so that it doesn't stick to my surface. And then the top. And then I'm gonna use a disinfecting wipe to remove the paste off of it. And I am getting a little bit of staining here. Um, I could use a board eraser to help remove any of that. Sometimes that's um, helpful, but the staining in no way impacts the usability of the transfer. Our transfers are reusable six to 12 times or more with proper care. And proper care really is just removing the paste or the ink from the transfer. Obviously, I'm using paste. Our paste is water soluble. We do have the option of using inks with our transfers. And our inks are permanent once they're heat set. And you just heat set them with an iron or um, uh, a heat press. And great for use on fabric and ceramics and things like that. Ceramics, obviously, you can't use a heat press or an iron, but you could um, heat them in a toaster oven. Probably not wise to use the oven that you would be cooking your regular food in, so I wouldn't re recommend your regular oven on your stove, just because depending upon what the surface you're applying it to is made out of, you don't know what that might give off. So I'm just cleaning off the paste off the back and then going across it to remove any lint that I've deliberately applied. I'm going to put this on the side to dry and let's take a look at my four little rounds that I've created here. Got a little bit of a bow up here that I'm just gonna apply. I've got glue dots. I was gonna hot glue them and I said, huh, why should I hot glue them when I could use a glue dot? Huh, 
Yeah, right. I think somewhere I lost the glue dot here. Nope, it's still here, stuck to my finger. Let me get see if I could stick it to the round. Didn't stick so well the first time. Okay, there we go. You need to do a little bit of fine tuning of that little bow. I don't know, what do you think of the rounds? Something interesting, a little bit different to play around with, a little bit different of a surface. Not a lot of prep and rather actually pretty easy all in all. Fa la la, y'all. I think they're cute, they're sweet. And whether I just make a short little banner and drape it over something, or if I make it a lot little longer, I think it'll just, um, it'll be cute either way. If you're not a member of my VIP group and would like to be privy to specials and um, different kind of perks and benefits that I offer that I can't offer on my regular page, just comment VIP below and I will send you the link so that you can um, join my VIP group. If you're not familiar with Club Couture, comment Club below and I'll send you some information about it. Club Couture is our subscription package that sends you automatically once a month an eight and a half by 11 transfer along with three individual paste packets to give you an hour of creative bliss every month without thinking about anything. No choices to be made. Um, the paste packets are um, color coordinated to go with your transfer and the transfers are exclusive to club members and to designers. And if you think you might like to do what I do, Comment team below and I'll send you a link to a little video that tells you about what it's like to become what it takes and what it's like to be a designer. Thank you so much for watching this evening. I hope everything's going great for y'all with um, your holiday prep and whatever. Thank you so much for watching. See you soon.